What's up? It's oh, guys! What's up? It's your boy <laughs> Chuckles here and Chili, and we have a very special guest today. Um, he plays airsoft. You've seen him once or twice before. You see him, you know him. This is uh, he can introduce himself. He's he could the say some. Irishman. He could he could say some stuff about himself. Uh, yeah, I've already been here once. It's Brendan from Icon Reapers. How's everybody doing tonight? We're doing great because I accidentally set off my car alarm. <laughs> I, my keys were so peculiarly arranged in my pocket. Um, I'm gonna turn that off so I don't get distracted because I will get distracted. Thank you. I kept looking over and I'm like, oh wow, that's me in attack vest. What am I doing over there? I'm a medic. <laughs> um, so guys, we're back at it. Uh, me and some of the crew, i.e., me, Brandon, Decoy. I don't know who else uh, Scott, went. Scott. Uh, Bunch of other homies. People you know. We went to Shock Up. XX Stash X or whatever. <laughs> this past weekend. And uh, shot a lot of people. Got shot a lot. And mm. put in work. Um, yeah. as, as affectionately known. Big Dick Murder Squad. Mm. Uh, and I actually got the CO to call us that. But we'll talk more about that after. Let's do some extreme related stuff. Guys, you already know, gaming's open. We have five different sessions going on in a weekend. Um, we have Friday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, 11.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Then 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Then 8.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. is the Saturday night special. This weekend we have adult night again. Uh, most of our friends were away. So mm -hmm. we're doing another one. Hopefully get more. I mean, adult night's always a fun time no matter how many people show out. But um, I, yeah. I don't know how the turnout was last weekend because uh, I obviously wasn't here. But I heard it was, it was pretty good. people showed out in force. So oh, yeah. that's always good. 400 FPS, no required safety kill, pyro, all those fun things. It's a great <laughs> time. Um, and then Sunday we do 12 to 4. All of the sessions, each individually, are $25 plus $20 if you need to rent. So $25. Or forty-five dollars, and you can do an all-day pass on Saturday. I think we do it for sixty bucks. Yeah. So you get all three sessions. So that's almost mm -hmm. like that's like eleven-ish hours of airsoft, which is probably uh, more than enough for 12. most of you. Twelve. Uh, uh, it's twelve if you include the breaks. So more airsoft than you guys will probably want. I see a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel Airsoft in the chat, ADHD squad, wreck of chuckles at it again. I was breaking stuff. Costa. Hey, Costa. Hey, Costa. The, uh, the saddle gun gun. Actually, can you get the saddle gun on the stand and we can put that there? Because that's super cool, and I want to get one, so we'll talk about that too. Um, the store is open, our online store. We're adding stuff every day. We're processing orders still, so whatever order you have. Actually, so the saddle guns are what? There's only a 1,000 of them, right? We got a bunch in, and we've already we've already sold. Five. I mean, we got them like when yesterday. Yep. We got them yesterday, and we've already sold five. Retail price point on these bad boys is two fifty. I want to yep. say. Yeah, two fifty. Uh, CO two powered. They do use shells from the smoke wagon revolvers. Or did we get the gamblers too? Yep. I will actually go grab that one right now. Oh, jeez. I grabbed them all. This chamber only holds five rounds. No. Ten. This one holds ten? Yeah. I don't remember that. Guys, this is we crazy. Five to work with. Oh, right. We were a shot. This was fun at SHOT Show, and I guarantee you this is still fun here. Um, oh, it's a blast. I got to say, pretty exciting. So you can actually, we've had a few of these be purchased through our online store. So if you want it shipped to your house directly from Extreme Airsoft, the one, the only, uh, check it out. Yeah. These guys are pretty awesome, actually. I don't want to derail the entire stream and yeah. talk about these guys, but they're kind of cool. Yeah. Cool thing about, I mean, what I like about the Gambler, obviously, the grips, rather than feeling like a cheap plastic on some of them. It they does used feel to be, really good. It feels really solid. Um, it has a Gambler on the side but engraved but the coolest thing is on the back strap it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed which is kind of legit i don't know you should can you get up to the camera i don't know if it'll pick that up but uh, 
that. Well done. <laughs> I had to make sure I wasn't turning it upside down. So. Yeah. And unlike a lot of other uh, shell ejectors, this one actually has an ejector. And it throws them. Yeah, that, that uh, that's awesome. That is super cool. I will buy... Oh, I need to stop spending money. Eh, no such thing. We story. had a fun weekend. Um, so you can pick that up and a bunch of other goodies on our online store. Really great, really exciting. Um, I don't know if there's any news that I missed uh, in my absence. Uh, no. Teaching and stuff. I'm... Uh, the AAPs will be coming out soon. So uh, if you guys have watched Kicking Mustangs video, uh, those little pistols will be coming out soon and they will be available for purchase here. At Extreme those AAPs Airsoft. are green gas powered, yep. right? Green gas powered. They take standard WE and Tokim Rui Glock magazines. Uh, they've got a really snappy recoil, especially because it's like it's only a little bit recoiling, but it's a it's a lot. I'm gonna break this. I'm it's a lot stop. of fun. I'm gonna uh, stop. I'm gonna break stuff. Eh, they're hard to break. Uh, What's a chrono at? Uh, I don't think we've actually chronoed it, but from what we've that. been told, it's about 400 feet per second with a 0 .2 gram BB. So it should be field legal. Well, at adult nights only. That's so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's no other news covered, we got a bunch of orders. The uh, We have the special edition T10s. The Ronin 47 Drifter Special Edition. Um, and I think the Ronin... Did we get the Ronin 47s, the regulars versions? Or did uh, we just get the limited yet. edition? We just okay. got limited edition for so right So limited now. edition for right now. Those guys are going to be in limited batch. Um, we're getting a lot of those as well. So hopefully they won't... I mean, we pre-sold a bunch. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. All right. Time for getting into to be the meat and potatoes. I'm this past right weekend, I know, it sounds so good. Every Anytime somebody says meat and potatoes, I'm like, I could go for some beer. You're hungry. Um, anyways, okay. So, this past weekend, we went to Shock Up, me and the rest of the guys on the Rikon Reapers. Um, we rolled up with a couple of friends as well. Uh mm. And it was actually uh, one of our, one of the guys, Jayhawk. I mean, he hasn't played regularly in like two years, so it was crazy to see him again. Like I was yeah. so stoked to see him. And then I saw Kiko. I haven't seen Kiko in a while. And then some of the other regulars that were frequenting for a while and kind of took a break, got into real steel. So now they're back. It was really fun. Um, so this was at the. Summit Shock Facility in, it's outside of, was it, it was outside of all, I mean, it's really in Summit, New York, mm. but yeah. it's outside of Albany, right, I think was the location. Yeah, um, I believe so. Cobble Skill, New York, I got a ticket there, actually. Um, last time, last year when I went, I got in trouble, so don't, don't be <laughs> being a hooligan now, um, which is really cool. It's a minimum security uh, juvenile detention center. Um, and it's actually a really cool spot. Like, yeah. there's a lot of, there's more than enough CQB, but there's also a bunch mm -hmm. of long-range engagements that you kind of run into. Yeah. Um, trying to just, like, brief. You obviously had Tan Team was a GTF, um, and you had the Cartel, which was Green Team. And so the theme was Breaking Bad, Op Breaking Bad, Shock Op, blah, blah. Um, so it kind of didn't, it sort of followed the stories. The missions were in like a three hour ish cycle. So you had your first cycle, pause X, second cycle, pause X, last cycle, pause X. Next day was just straight through all the way. Um, and so you'll hear some very epic stories because we all, we all had a really big squad. We had about 20 dudes or so, um, in our, in our squad, quote unquote, and so you had four fire teams, and we were really able to operate very functionally independently. So we were able to get a lot done, and I feel like we kicked, we did, we kicked some serious butt. I mean, not you know, not to brag or anything, but I know the boys were, the, our guys were killing it this weekend. Um, so, yeah. So the first cycle was we had to. Um, 
They chose one of the buildings. We had to hide an HVT in it. Essentially hold the building down for three hours and hold the HVT so that we can extract him, uh, which was really intense uh, initially. Like, the fighting was, was pretty crazy. Um, I'll let Brendan talk about his the first few, your, your experience of that, because we all got split up because that building that we were in was way too big for even a 20-man team. And, like, before the game could, you know, we didn't even have all of our guys in there by the time game start happened. So, uh, you, what, 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 what happened on your end? Because I was, you know, all the way on the other side. Yeah. So this was my first time running at this AO. So just trying to soak everything in and trying to analyze that whole building was just, it, it nightmare. was almost too much. <laughs> um, and me being a fire team leader, I went away from my fire team trying to figure out the rest of this building, and I could not find them to save my life. And being so close together, radios were an issue too, so I couldn't get back. And when I was trying to uh, green hit the building, so instead of tr falling back and, and holding up a different position, I just stayed there and fought the, uh, the incoming attack. And so I found this little room off, um, off shoot of the large room that they were breaching, and I was just launching fates and reapers down <laughs> at the other end of the hallway, and uh, they eventually got me from the opposite side. They had waxed the couple guys behind me, and I didn't know. And uh, me and this dude traded, and then they threw a grenade into the room I was in, so I was like dead, dead. <laughs> at that point. Yeah, I. Uh, that's that's pretty. <laughs> that's kind of like how it happened. The first, I wasn't even ready for game start. When it happened, I had me and my two, me, it was me, uh, Nick Carcetti, and he had Dom, so he had Snowman, and we all were going, and we kind of got separated because everybody's going that way. I was trying to call out to them to like, hey, like, what's happening? Next thing I know is I hear shots and like people are brief. I was like, oh my God, I got in the first room that I could. I dove in kind of, you know, I was, it was like two large rooms that were connected. Um, it's the side closest to their spawn uh where we held just held it down so we were like oh no um so as you know dudes are coming in so we're trying to you know defend the doors dom got separated from us nick you know fought but he was in an exposed position so he ended up going down right outside a full squad of dudes just rolled up on me so i popped a grenade in third and i wiped out an entire squad and I was like, cool, now I'm focusing on the door. They're trying to, like, get in. I hear them shooting it. They open the door. They try to shoot. One dude comes in, gets shot right away, rolls out of the way. Another dude tries to come in, and I shoot him. And he steps. He's still outside, and he steps it back. Another dude, and then another dude. And then, so I knocked three dudes before they could even get through the door. They shut the door. The dude inside is like, after everything cleared up, he was freaking out. He's like, what the frig? Like, he's like, what the F? This was this, this was this. I was like, sorry, dog. You know, I like, it was my fault. I prevented his teammates from coming in, but they also just didn't go follow through. He was like, no, man, I preached. I was all by myself and I had nobody in there. In there. So, so I held it down for like another few minutes before I got attacked from that side again. We had more dudes come. I whacked one guy and then another dude came up threw a grenade in the room and I whacked him, but I got grenaded. So we were all just like, <laughs> so that first, uh, that first cycle was really, uh, felt like it kind of went on forever because then, yeah. but then we, uh, we all, I would say we regrouped. I know decoy and company yep. were on the other side of the building. Uh, yeah. and they were holding it down pretty, they were whole, I mean, I did, you obviously didn't have, we didn't have any issues with that portion. Um, but they had a bunch of heavy hitters over there. So we had that locked down pretty hard. They tried a few times. We booby trapped the door once <laughs> or twice. Um, not yeah. me, but it was it was pretty funny. Um, but I think we successfully exfilled the HVT. I was, again, yeah. in another portion of the building when that happened. Hmm. Or I was, I don't even remember what happened. Everything's <laughs> kind of a blur sometimes. <laughs> especially when, like, we all, like, pushed out the... All you know is... You somehow someone was able to exfil him. Somewhere. We literally like pushed out yeah. in, on mass, boom, and it was just like a bunch of dudes just coming out. Yeah. And uh, I take a green, uh, 
green tinkled themselves a little bit. They probably did. I mean, yeah. honestly. The, they, the tough part with extracting him, because uh, I was there for that, it's the HVT wasn't an actual person. It was a MMA doll. Right. So it, it's a huge Wade dummy. And so he's just big and awkward to carry. And, you know, somebody had to sacrifice a rifle to, to you know, fire him and carry this guy. And, um, you know, <laughs> Green also knows when we're supposed to extract and where the extraction point is. Ooh. So when we hit the door that we wanted to get out, they were already waiting. So at that point, we had two saw gunners. You know, as soon as we kicked that door open, they came out started blasting and you know we set up a firing line of, of other dudes to help support the you know the you know the rest of the guys to maneuver and to get the hbt out of there before you know green could come in and waste the wet the rest of us and it was uh, maybe a 20 meter sprint to where we had to go from the building to uh, um where our extraction point was but yeah we made that, it that was pretty it was pretty it was pretty legit though. That was legitness. Um, I uh, and the so then the second uh, cycle, I can't even remember what the what was the second cycle objective. I can't even remember. So um, we took uh, like a half lab. hour, forty five. What was it? The cookhouse. The cookhouse. The lab. The lab. The yeah, 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 yeah. So, hmm. um, so how it happened is, I you know. We had the three hours, which is good. That was straight through. You could go back to your CP, obviously. And then um, you took a half hour, 45 minute break and then briefed and then went out for the next mission. Our job then was green team URG had to set up the cookhouse. Um, they had to set up the meth lab to make meth. Um, and our job was to get there. We had a special grenade to destroy it. Um, oh. so we had to disrupt it and see some of the stuff and take it back. Mm. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was that sick. one was kind of tough because they were starting <laughs> inside as well. And like all yeah. over, they were all over the place by the time we got, uh, down. Oof. Um, so that's pretty cool. We got a URG fan in the chat, but it doesn't matter dog. Cause you guys <laughs> lost. So <laughs> I was the LMG gunner that held off most of the JTF team. That's very nondescript. Uh, that's you that could be anybody you could be anybody it didn't work though because you know all the <laughs> we, we did it um but you know but but that's cool i'm glad that you know it's always fun shooting at people mm. i saw you know i was i think i so well we'll talk about that later we'll talk about people um so that was pretty uh that that portion was pretty fun i don't know if you want to recount any of the fun activities that came out of that yeah, yeah. Again, in the same room that I started out in was where we found the uh, the initial cooking uh, pot. So I was the runner, and I ran that back to Squat. Who uh, Squat? Squat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> squat. <laughs> and um, team leader. You know, I ran it back because I had heard over comms that we needed the cooking pot, and there were some baggies or something with it. Mm -hmm. And so somebody's like, hey, I just found this, like, chilling in the corner. I'm like, well, freaking give it to me. And I ran it, and I found them, and we got those points, but we needed to find the actual smokehouse. So oh. in this massive hallway, there's multiple offshoots that just go places. And one of them was this smoky uh, room. And it was turns out it was like a gym, you know, a, a, a gym. But the fog in there was so dense, oh, you couldn't gosh. see, you know, two inches ahead of you. So we had a, a full squad of dudes that went in there, and I couldn't see two inches in front of me. <laughs> it, it was nuts. I remember. That was, uh, that was pretty rough going in there. And P, uh, PJT in the chat said, he right before you said that, he said it was all the smoke in the, in the cookhouse, man. That was rough. Yeah. Like, I was trying to shine my light just to oh, see was... something, and I could, oh, couldn't bad. see. I'm like... I almost tripped and fell on state. I, there was like a, a raised platform in there. Mm. I almost didn't see. I almost ate it on. But then I found a door to like outside and I was like, maybe I'll just sit here for a while with uh, Kyle. 
I was like, we'll just sit in this doorway. Maybe it'll be good. Yeah, dude, that was Vape Life 101. There was so much in there I could not see. I was like, they were like, all right, we're all getting out of here right now. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, I don't want to be in there anymore. Why didn't you guys just sit at the door with, like, a big piece of cardboard? And just... Nick Carcetti was like, Chuck, was like, Chuckles, Chuckles. I was like, I'm here, bud, I'm here. I was so lost in the sauce, man. That was tough. Yeah. But uh, Deepa that was a fun a cool cycle picture. too. Um, That's of the uh, they had some they had set up several like, I wouldn't call them beacons. I don't know. I guess they were just signal lights that were kind of going off. So that was actually pretty. Uh, yeah, it was a good photo to snag. It's pretty mm. cool. So that was uh, that was fun, and we did end up staying. I think for the night portion. Uh, no. We didn't end up staying, unfortunately. But we were back at it bright and early the next morning, unlike a lot of the other people. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> that's all. You know, that's always how it is. They, you know, last they, it's better than last year. Last year at Shock Up, yeah. day two, it was literally just our squad that was there at Start X at like nine, Oof. and we like yeah. went at it. Just us, like. All the we thought we had the joke we made was like we're the only team out there. There's like maybe ten of us. So then the yeah. you know all the URG guys, are like, you know their team full SWAT wiped, and they're just like whoa, 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 whoa. they're like clearing out. And we're like you we were just waiting for our bleed out time, and they're like you guys know there's there's nobody else here, right? Do you remember that we're the only squad here? So that was kind of funny um, for a bit. Um, Mm. Yes, it was to find the egg. That was smart. I didn't even pay yeah. attention to finding the exits. That would have made so much sense. I would have just followed the lights if I had used half of a brain cell to figure that out, but I really didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I was like, wow, those are nice blinking lights. I was like, wow, that's a kind of cool effect. That was kind of a cool effect. That was smart, though. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah. And then day two, our objective was to... We had another VIP to secure, was and it, so was it another mannequin or was it an actual? Uh, it was the MMA again. No, another mannequin. Uh, um, so we had to hold him down in one of the buildings. Um, yep. I I stepped foot in that building once, and then was not in that building for the rest of the day. Um, but because we were so, we had a we had a you know spread out. We were thinned out pretty hard, but we were you know putting in work it was pretty fun um i what would you say was your uh you know favorite part like what was the part that you enjoyed the most about the the op i mean there were there were quite a few Dude. i mean it's always a good time no matter what um one of the, one of the good ones was in the building we had the hvt on the second day um after I got, after we redconned back to our medic um, in that building, we were holding it, and Green tried to make a push for it, and so we kept one of the doors open slightly so we could kind of see outside, but we could see if people were trying to make a make a move on it. Well, they slammed that shut, which alerted everybody in the building that they were going to make that door. So they ripped it open, and I was directly in front of that door with another door blocking as like my hard cover and so as soon as that door ripped open i just started shooting and one after one they just filtered right into my bb's <laughs> and as they're now focused on me because i'm the first one they see i had uh jones in the corner blasting them as they're coming up the stairs and then we had two or three other guys that were in like the depths of the room that you couldn't even see um, also blasting them, and Scott on the other side of the door, lighting them up as they were coming in. So these guys were just screwed no matter which way they came in. <laughs> uh, and the other part with Kyle fragged me was was. Another <laughs> Wait, Kyle fragged you. Oh. Yeah, he he was high off of his own success because he threw a frag grenade over the wall and killed four or five dudes, and, you know, we were like, yeah, 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 good job, good job, and he, and he went and did another one, but it didn't go nearly as far, and it came about halfway between me and him, hit a branch, and it fell right down next to me, and I was like, oh, Kyle, no! <laughs> so, you know, I, I wasn't getting out of the way fast enough, and it, it you know, it, it killed me, and 
he like ran away because he was afraid of what I was gonna <laughs> what I was gonna do to him after. So yeah, yeah, I think the angry grenadiers uh, always be afraid of them. True, because yeah. you never know Absolutely. when that buckshot round is gonna start flying. <laughs> um, no. I gotta say that that and that was, the good thing about the about our guys though is there wasn't an excess about tan team in general, as there was not an excessive amount of green on green. Like we did not yeah. uh, shoot each other a lot. <laughs> Not nearly as many times as green team got into engagements with each other and would like borderline wipe each other's oh. squads. Like they they just had no, and th- I think this was this was an issue across the board with the with the green team yeah. is their ability to iff was terrible. Yeah. Like they would just it, it was pretty it was pretty rough because they just walk in and they just shoot at which you know it's it makes sense. But, like, yeah. it's kind of a pain because everybody just gets shot extra, even if you have your nice bright red light on or your really fancy red rag hanging in your face. They just see you and they shoot you. And we were on uh, day two. We were holding this building, some of us, and so we were in there, blah, 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 blah. I got shot. I was like, okay, cool. Like, red rag, red light, good. Uh, dudes threw grenades. That's fine. Dudes walked in and just started mowing everybody down. And like I was, <laughs> I was like, I got shot thirty times. I was like, dog, come on! I'm like, you have to like kind of have some sort of you know discipline. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, there were some issues with players. I would say very suspicious activities happening. I think some people forgot or didn't read the op order about the uh, medic rules. So the it was new to me. Well, kind of new ish. Um, they did pretty much the same thing. The only difference was now, rather than having the red knot, you had to have the hit stick, which was mandatory on the left back side of your person, which I kind of like that system. It really simplified it. Um, yeah. I kind of like... Especially if you're wearing gloves, too. It makes it yeah. easier to, to grab and do it than doing the knot. Right. But I kind of like the knot because it was a challenge. It wasn't easy to just medic some yeah. dude back up. He had to put some work in. Um, PJT, I was killed more times from teammates than the enemy... I also believe that. I am very inclined to believe that. I got shot a lot. Like, I mm. I died a lot. On our last, yeah. one of our last few deployments out, like, I had three teammates offer me, like, three teammates or two gave me, like, their extra life. Like, they sacrificed their life to medic me back in. <laughs> and I just, I died. I was just like, this is, you know, we were stuck. It was just, like, the worst building to be uh. in. Decoy was with me. He was in my fire team with me, Decoy, uh, Dom, Jayhawk, and Nick. And that was a pretty bad place to be because oh, yeah. there was just the building we were in, which was directly above the building where the HVT was. You know, you had the doors. They had a really thick brush line. They had um, oh, that they one. had the burn down the side. Like, it was – and they had a building, and they had the – they, they had a lot of advantages – that they could just lean into the... <laughs> and that was the place that they wanted to be so they, they could assault the HVT location. It was, it was rough. Ooh. It was pretty relentless. I'm surprised we... I'm not surprised, but I'm kind of surprised we, like, held out so long. We did a pretty good job. Uh, not to toot our own horn or anything. Well, but, mean, I mean, it was pretty good, though. Yeah, like, the green that. guys definitely gave us a run for our money on some of the... Some of the stuff. Like, definitely, I was, like, spending a lot of time, like, sweating hard. I was, like... <sighs> I was like, dog, are we going to... I was sitting there, I was like, are we going to survive? <laughs> like, I started... No. We, we were out there for so long, I was like... I was like, every... <laughs> I had to reload all of my magazines, like, twice. I was like, I run four mags, you know? That's more than enough normally, yeah. but, like, just that long-term engagement that we were in, just wild. Um, mm. How did you feel about the structure of the game how it's set up into a mission to do in the three hour time slot versus having a continuous running op with you know missions that have to com- be completed by x hour and this stuff and have other hmm. objectives going on kind of at the same time uh, you know it's a little different because each organizer you know as in stag ops or msato or ams or you know they have their own little spin on how they run the game and you know it can be refreshing when it's like that um there hasn't been a stag ops game in a little while so we've been just hitting msato events um so it 
can get a little stale after that because it's like you're just doing the same thing every time. Um, but again, it's when you have that breakup, it's nice. But I also like the story, so it's as long as there's sure. a good story to it, and, and everything that you're doing is making sense for that, I got no problem doing it. Right. I like the. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I like both. I remember when when we first when I first started going to Emsada Games with the guys, they still did the you know straight through nonstop. Like you go in yeah. at you know nine a.m. Saturday morning yeah. and it's straight through until like four on Sunday. So you had your, yep. you know, snapshot objectives. So every hour they take inventory of who was in what building, um, yep. you know, and I would go through 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., wherever. Um, so those were pretty crazy times and you had to be, it was a constant fight. And I kind of like that yeah. because you didn't know how everything yeah. was going. Mm-hmm. You weren't sure how it was going. But it's also kind of nice to get that gratification of knowing, yeah. like, the HVT was extracted, we did it, now we're going to go do another one. Yeah. Um, I think with a lot of CQB places, it works out a lot better doing yeah. the shorter cycles. And you have those yeah. big outdoor fields, it makes more sense to kind of have things going yeah. um, going around, for sure, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's more situational, dep- depending on where the location is and, and what you're doing. What did you think of the AO? I thought the AO was cool. I mean, again, used to extreme, so it's very at homey. <laughs> um, the long hallways with no cover in between uh, throw you, for, you know, for a loop a little bit. Wow. But again, mm. uh, nothing a good reaper down the hallway will fit. <laughs> that too. Um, you know, but I threw so many grenades thought- this weekend. I, I just like yeet yeet yeet. I was yeah. like, you get a grenade and you get a grenade. You know, oh, yeah. Costa was kind enough to share them. <laughs> I must have thrown five or six, and I probably shot about five or six uh, launchables. Oof. Oh, I definitely threw like ten grenades, like no cap. Like Costa was kind enough to loan me a few, so I was just like, bam, 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 bam. like just on you know day one, I was like. Well, I have these grenades. Let's start them. Yeah. I got a few. There were a few duds. I tried right at the end X, right before end X at day two. I pulled a grenade. I was trying to throw it all the way down. We were in the back side of uh, that church tower. Or not the tower, but that church. So I tried to throw it, and it was like you were on the back side of the building, and I threw the grenade, and I was like, oh, it's a great throw. The wind hit it. It was like... Pfft. And then landed right on the corner of the building. Thankfully, it was on the side you guys, none of my guys were on. But I was like, it was like, bam! I was like, aw, that's not, well, that wasn't cool. Again, with the uh, with the duds too. At, right before index, I was having problems with the grenade launcher uh, at the end of the first day. So, beginning of day two, we got it somewhat working. That we figured, it, as long as I pop the cartridge right before I go and use it, I have enough gas to be able to send out one or two rounds. Uh, before I'd have to pop a new cartridge in it. But I, I popped the cartridge, I launched around, and I got it to where I wanted it, and I went for a follow-up shot, and it didn't work. So I was like, oh, man. So I popped the breach, I checked the round, I put the round back in, and I went to go shoot again, and it did like that the typical cartoon, like it went two inches out of the barrel and, hit, and dropped straight down. <laughs> and then, like four of the tangents were like, oh, shit. And we like turned around and ran because we... We didn't know if it was going to blow up or not because it came, it came out of the grenade launcher. But luckily it didn't go off, so either somebody ended up with a free Reaper or it was, a, you know, a dud. But uh, that was pretty funny. We all just ran away from it and all scared. It's like, oh, man. That happens. Uh, that happens. Bad grenade throws. That happened once or twice. Yeah. PJT, yeah. what did he say? I saw a teammate toss a grenade, rode slowly down a hill, and kill a single guy. You had to watch it roll down. <laughs> that kind of stuff is the best when you see the grenade throw, and you know that it's just you're just like this is this is not good, and it's too late. You can't do anything. Like if you're in a room with your guys, you're kind of cooking it for a hot second. You yeah. throw it, it hits the wall, and it bounces back. You're not running ten feet. You're not gonna get ten feet away in like two seconds. So you're just like. Yeah. The- <laughs> You're just like, dang it, bam! Or like well, uh, Roche one was. with the poor green guys. What? I said like uh, 
like Roche won with the poor green guys when we were up top. The uh, green team hung oh, the yeah. grenade in, but it, they forgot to like really uh, cup they it, didn't so time it, just it, so it dropped straight in into their dead squad mates. We're all just like, uh oh, that, and all of us were just behind cover going, ah, grenade. Roll, that was pretty boom. funny. That's... Roll, shoot. <laughs> that was uh, that that happened so many times. Like I remember at Dorigo, the first one. And they were trying to breach the building, the the portion of the building we were in, and so they tried. The guy tried to throw a grenade, and it bounced right in the ground in the middle. It bounced off the wall or something Ooh. in the middle of their squad. Went off, and they were like, "God dang it!" Like, they all died, and we were just like, "What just happened?" And Giuseppe went up and took a peek. He was like, "Oh, they, they fragged themselves." Like, <laughs> literally, that was uh, that was that feels like forever ago. Um, which it was. Yeah, that was yeah. like two. That was two years ago, I think. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. So, what do you think was? Oh. What? BJT. They, uh, his squad was one that got your Reaper. The free Reaper? Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, hopefully they don't blow up on you. Try to <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't pretty much your detonate in the tube. Yeesh. What do you? Is there? Um. Was a question I was going to ask. What aspect do you feel like could have been tweaked to have made the experience a little bit more uh, better? And if you if the, you don't think there's anything that could have really have been, been there. adjusted to make it a, you know, a, oh jeez, sorry, yeah. oh, my, oh. I've been standing all day, so like sitting on this, it's weird. Yeah. Um, any aspect do you think that could be uh, different or just improved upon that might make you know, future ops a little bit more. As far as like the, the op itself or like. Yeah. The op itself, whether it's like the structure or how, you know, situations were handled, missions were run, all of those. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the last couple of events have been kind of lacking on the, story side of things as it is like the missions are just kind of your typical you know you're gonna hold this green's gonna attack you're gonna extract it like it, it like it more redundant mm. um a little bit more mission uh you know variety i guess would be a good one um as long as it makes sense to the objective to you know it's I would like to see role players come back. Mm. Um, these were just a couple dummies that we were looking for, not actual people. Uh, when we first did M. Sato back at like the first Breaking Bad in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, I mean, you mm. were dealing with real role players that you've had to chase down. Um, you have to negotiate you had, with. You know, you had to search them. They had weapons on them that they could be used. You know, you it, it, it was more in, intense back then and it's i feel like it's just been kind of lacking and i would like to see that come back i i think i i, I agree with that uh mm -hmm. pjt says getting the op started on time that too but i feel like there's yeah. this weird trend happening in airsoft where now everybody's like super lax about start times even though they paid 165 dollars yeah. for this event they still kind of show up like whenever yep. yeah, um that, yeah, but ops. I mean, you know, it's it's the standard you have to maintain. I agree with the missions yep. is I feel like, I mean, you know, saying, hey, guys, uh, you need to go to this building and hold it down for three hours. And that's it. I felt, I, you know, it kind of felt like there could have been another layer to it that made it more interesting uh, or yeah. that gave it a greater challenge for either team. Maybe mm. they had to do this. Maybe we had to do this. Um yeah. And I definitely miss dealing with the role players. Um, yeah. You know, they added such a an, an interesting element. Like I remember, you know, at uh at the Breaking Bad Breaking Bad Two at Fitchburg, they did. Um, you know, you had to grab your guys. I remember Church, who used to be on the team, um, got in a and me. I got tangled up in it. We were restraining this guy because he tried to pull a. A fake knife right <laughs> but he tried to pull he was a role player so we had him we were interrogating him or questioning him and he tried to pull out a knife so we like restrained him to the ground that dude said pineapple faster than you could even think <laughs> like his like his so um 
But you had inter- interesting interactions. We had, I think it was Breaking Bad 4 was at Wallingford, the steel uh, the steel mill, right? Maybe. I don't, I, um, that not that one. But we had to order, the, 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 the dudes negotiated for us to order pizza. So we had Domino's delivered to the site. And our team was the team that had to escort it to <laughs> their... Um, <laughs> We had to escort it to them. We were talking to them. I literally somewhere have a 45-minute conversation recorded of us just talking about, like, you know, everything. So it was – but, you know, yeah. and the both sides – one of this one role player negotiated with both sides and played both of them, and it got, like, a bunch of money out of it and this and security and immunity and all of this stuff. But it just added such an interesting – they'd sneak off. You have yeah. to find a way to be subtle and convince them and – all that stuff. So I do kind yeah. of miss that. So hopefully Tom will do like an AAR form. He can kind of throw up some yeah. of that information. Actually, yeah, that would have been cool. Like if the mannequins were actually, uh, whatchamacallits, uh, like hostile HVTs and were trying to escape that entire time. Right. It would have made, it seems like it would have made you guys a living hell. Cause it would have. And it probably would have been better because a lot of us, I mean... You know, we were posted up at all of the doors, but sometimes on our portion of the building, it was pretty dead where I was kind of stationed. Yeah. So we were all kind of just like sitting around and talking and, yeah. you know, enjoying snacks. Um, yeah. Well, at least with like a live HVT, you, you don't get complacent like that either. You right. Know, with, you, with just the dummy, you get complacent because you know that dummy is not going to. Well, you hope the dummy isn't going to get up and just walk away. <laughs> I'd be really terrified um, if, if that up happened. If walks away, I'm going to be walking right out that door. <laughs> <laughs> um, PJT, I remember Jack Frost too and negotiating with a terrorist with an IED and taking out half the team with it. That oh was in my. Fishburg. Yeah, stuff like that happens. You never know when they're, you know, they used to, it still says it in the op board. If somebody has an IED on their person, like, yeah, you still and it got goes it, off. You still got to make sure yeah. stuff is happening. So it's pretty cool. Um, if anybody in the chat has any questions about the op or for Brendan as our fire team leader, Grenadier, I ran as the fire team leader for second, for the second fire team. And so that was a different experience. I've never really been, I've never really been, I kind of did like some, you know, some pseudo stuff, but nothing really in a position of, of that. So that was very interesting. It's definitely a new aspect of managing personnel. Um, but it was definitely cool. Like we got to do work and operate kind of on our own and do some things without having to be strictly attached to the squad, but still, uh, kick, but serious, mm. but. Um, uh, how was the food? Uh, what food? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was actually really, you know, it was pretty good. It's like we got a, we had sweet sausages, we had hot sausages, Ooh. we had, uh, burgers and that was pretty much it. Oh, and, uh, Jones made his famous, uh, pasta salad, which, you know, it doesn't, there was, it was literally like day two. <laughs> it was day two and there was like one scoop left when we all were like we were all packed up and we were just chilling scott busted out the grill and started grilling um nice had a few drinks had a few you know other snacks that were pretty good we had a lot of fun it was a really cool it was a good time and it was nice just reconnecting because it's kind of tough with uh with um the it's kind of tough with covid seeing people in general anyways but it's always nice going up, especially when you see a bunch of your old friends and you roll up with them and get to do, yeah. you know, hood rat type activities, mm. um, which is great. You know, like at, at that place where there were so many spots you could kind of like hide. And, but, you know, we were uh, even with like half our dudes, you know, like I know Costa's gun went down. So he was running his oh. Glock most of day, uh, day, <laughs> day one, one, which admittedly like if he did work he'd be like oh watch this pop, pop, and get these dudes yeah, he did. so some of these dudes putting uh putting some serious work pretty limited but uh what happened to costa's gun uh it, it i don't remember it like so it has a kythera in it I, there's something new i don't remember what specifically it was he had to do to it to get it to fire but it had an issue where it wasn't it got like locked up Ooh, there's like something you have to do kythera. 
Yeah, you had to, yeah. That was your first. Ooh. You ran. The, did, no, you ran it for the. You ran the AK for day one, right? How did the yep. Kythera do? How do you like that? I like it a lot. I, the only issue I had um, was the fact that it's such a strict, uh, uh, a stiff trigger pull right now because it's it's o- totally shimmed. Um, so it, it's it's too stiff, and I'm gonna have to back off some of them and, and see how that works. Um, but getting into engagements when there's multiple guys and I need quick follow up shots. Uh, was tough. I, I can't pull that trigger fast enough with how, how stiff it actually is. Um, so it, I was missing to my 416. Um, so I ran that day too, and that's it made a big difference, me playing. But I love it. I didn't have to worry about batteries at all day one. I mean, it was really cold. <laughs> um, so, yes. I, you know, battery issues weren't an issue for that because it's all mechanical. Um, and I had the CGS on it too, so... I was running CO2 the whole day, so that was that was real nice. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Yeah, I think that's the only way I would person. The only way I and I say it, the only way I would ever do uh, HPA again is if it was a mechanical system. So like a Kythera with a gas stock, either CO2 or HPA. I just don't want batteries anymore. I'm done with that life. I personally ran my Mark 18 all weekend. I didn't have any problems like that. Ugh. I just love it. I know I say it probably every time I talk about it, but it's probably my favorite airsoft gun ever. Um, it just does everything I need it to. It did a great job. Uh, everything is bone stock, so the thing kicks butt. Um, so just run three twos, kids. Outside is my recommendation. Yes. Whatever you can, run three twos because your hop up will probably handle it just fine. Um, what is Adam talking about in the comments? Uh, did you guys see the tri-sector gear what is that like the like ne- a tsg a tri-sector gear rather than the dsg we gotta talk about this we'll have to talk yes, about that later I, um jesus okay well we're gonna start wrapping up oh dear god that um, just sounds terrifying but you guys definitely missed a cool op with m sato um yeah. props to tom and his guys they put on a really great event Tom always gets some friggin' sweet ass spots. He does. Um, yep. Totally, totally cool. Um, wait, I didn't get shot in the head this time. That's a surprise. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That that you know normally happens. I didn't get shot in the face either. Sorry, decoy. He took one. He got a zinger. Hmm. <laughs> He's giving you the look. He's like, you know, we all get shot in the face sometimes. I almost. I got shot in the forehead, and I almost had to go to school with that. So I'm glad I, I I'm glad I didn't, because um, then they would have been like, "Who is this guy?" Like my teacher knows kind of like the scope of my work here, um, but most of the other teachers don't. And I don't, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's very exciting. It was a great op. You guys missed out on a good one. If you haven't ever before, go follow M Sato, M S A T O. Um, Milsim and Tactical blah 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 LLC. Go check him out on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, go to their website. I don't know. He Tom hasn't scheduled any other ops as of yet, I believe. Um, uh, not yet. So we'll see if anything pops up before the end of the year. Um, so, but looking forward to. I don't even. Know, are they going to release the second batch of uh, tickets for AJ? Like is that even? Uh, they're gonna release. I just saw it before we went live. Um, they're going to be doing a squad per faction and kind of see how that goes. Jeez. So that's supposed to go live noon on Friday. I think the twenty fifth. Dang. So, so this Friday. So if you're so trying to get on Spring Offensive, live. I don't know what tickets Autumn were. Justice. Autumn Justice. Uh, I always call it Spring Offensive. As far as price wise goes. Um, we missed the first batch because yeah. we were on our way up to the AO for shock. True. So. Yeah. Being adults, having jobs, it's yeah. tough. So uh, stay uh, tuned for Stag Ops for that. That'll be coming up. Um, I think I'm out of stuff to say. Guys, we're still yeah. getting super cool stuff in the store. Mm-hmm. Restocks weekly. We have cool stuff on the way. We still have 511 hanging up here. Grab some 511. Yeah. Cool. We have a bunch of new guns coming out. We have the... Yep. Uh, so we got a bunch of black rifles. So oh, we, we just got coffee. a restock of black rifle coffee. I know what I need to do tomorrow. Yeah, I and I need to 
Let Ooh, Ryan know. Look, is that a blue mug? It is a blue mug. Yo. Dude, you got to get get one of our hats. Go get a trucker hat, oh, Chili. We also got trucker hats. We have hats. We, this is a... Uh, 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 just came in today. We just got these trucker hats in. Uh, so they're $22. Yep. They're cool. They're charcoal and black in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I might have to pick one up because uh, the last time we had an event, somebody sold one of my hats. Nick? Wait. How? Because I put it on the table for display purposes. And then he sold it. Oh. So it's kind of funny. Okay. So other than that, guys, I think that's it. Just make yeah. sure, you know, stay well, stay kind, wear your freaking masks. Stay safe uh, and uh, pick one of these guys up while we have them. Pick them up. And the gamblers are also limited edition too, right? Mm -hmm. That's a one of a thousand as well. So um, can the, but Adam, you can buy the blue mug if you want to. I need to get some. I need something to carry my coffee in the morning. All right, guys. It's been your boy Chuckles, Chili, and thank you to our illustrious guest uh, for joining us today. Um, we will talk to you guys later. Hope to see you this weekend. I'll be here I'll be bright here. and early Saturday morning. Don't forget Adult Night this Saturday, plus for that. airsoft stuff and doing all the things. Mm -hmm. Guys, bye. See you. Bye. See ya.